The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, UNU Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. everybody thank you guys for tuning in to armed radio my name is shannon and i am mr bill <laughs> <laughs> and we are your hosts for talk live paranormal welcome, uh, and welcome welcome we are going to go ahead and bring in our guest and let him hang with us the whole show instead of like the last half hour so we're going to go ahead and bring in zach from all souls paranormal group welcome well, zach well thank you how's it going guys good good how are you Good, thanks. Good. Hey, before we get going too here, too hot, hot and heavy here, we want to. Throw, so sh- I can't talk now already. We're getting hot and heavy. I missed that memo. <laughs> <laughs> you need to read your faxes because Zach said he got it. So, Damn it. Um, <laughs> so I want to. I want to send out a big thank you and a big, uh, you know, thank you for everything you do to anybody from the armed forces and all our brothers and sisters out there that are listening from one veteran and from all, everybody who supports you in any way shape and form thank you guys for everything you do be safe keep your head down come home safe come home soon yes thank you for your service you guys and gals definitely now we also want to make sure the guys in the warehouse are listening once again no wrecking of forklift these are the rules for tonight forklifts are not optional to wreck they hurt um if you have to spend any time out there looking for for something that's paranormal and you're in body cam please turn it on and send it to us <laughs> just all I'm saying. So, <laughs> Zach, we got a whole warehouse yeah. full of guys that want to listen to us, and some of the security guys are wearing body cams, and we keep trying to tell them walk around with that thing turned on so you can record whatever happens there and then send it to us. Oh yeah, that's a smart idea. They actually they got, got cool one. little cameras though. <laughs> well, I looked up that body cam on uh, uh, on Amazon. It's like a hundred and forty nine dollars, and it does infer it, well. It does a, a full. It's a full spectrum camera. And it wasn't that bad. I thought, you know what, that'd be a great way to do something like, you know, anything. Missouri State, Penn, Edinburgh, over to, you know, any place, The especially the Queen Mary. That would be awesome to God, use there. I want to go there so bad. Have you ever been there, Zach? The Queen Mary? No, not yet at least. Yeah, so we all just have to go. We just have to take off and go. Let's go. Let's leave we now. have a lot of trips coming up because <laughs> we just want to pack up and go. <laughs> We got Zach. Have you ever heard of the Octagon Hall in Kentucky? Yes, I have. That is definitely on a bucket list. See, we're just gonna have to bring Zach with us. Okay, uh, I'll swing over, pick up Zach. You start on your way down. We'll meet, and then we'll just shoot straight down to Kentucky. I'm down. <laughs> I'm so down. After keep talking about that place, man, I I want to go to that one. I'm still jealous. You're going to the Sally House. <sighs> yeah, I'm not. Um, so let's uh, jump back to Zach and get it off me for right now. <laughs> so Zach, why don't you tell us a little bit about your group, what you guys do, where kind of where you're at, and all that fun stuff. So it's actually kind of funny because I saw your Facebook post earlier. Um, it's actually not All Souls anymore. It's that, That's a Facebook issue that I still cannot seem to get fixed. <laughs> um, we are now the Everlast Paranormal Society. Um, we used to be All Souls for probably about five years. Um, as of right now, we have four uh, team members, two are investigators, and one works as a researcher. Um, but, I mean, we go out uh, really to any place that could be purportedly haunted, um, whether it be a house, hotel, any kind of public area, um, and try and capture evidence. Um, we also do, besides that, we try and get the community involved as much as possible. So we've added a few extra things. Um, we are open for anyone to send us any type of like pictures, audio, whatever. Um, and we do get that all the time. But we are open to that. And we can you know take a look at things for you and kind of evaluate the situation. Um, we do also offer interviews for all of our clients that... 
Um, if you think your place of business is haunted, your house, whatever it may be, um, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Um, I can set up an interview and we can give you our best opinion, any sort of resources or advice, um, and stuff like that. But what's new about Everlast is that, um, we offer an education session now where, in order to get the community involved, if you have any questions about the paranormal or about a location or whatever it may be, we offer one-on-one -on -one sessions with you, and we will answer any of your questions you know, to the best of our ability. Um, we really, that's one of our main focuses right now, is to get more community involved. That's cool, that's though. Awesome. I mean, that's that's yeah, cool that's that you guys get more awesome. involved with the community. Now, how far yeah, do you I mean, guys usually travel? What's the furthest that you'll travel to help people? Right now, um, we have a service area that extends the entire state of Illinois. We do the eastern part of Iowa, um, the southern part of Wisconsin, and the western part of Indiana. Um, so that way it's not too, too far, but we are looking to expand into different areas um, because, I mean, we get requests from all over the country. That's awesome. And do you guys usually, is it mostly on the weekends where you guys can do this? Do you guys all have full-time jobs and stuff? We do have jobs, but, I mean, it's pretty flexible. So we do um, investigations and all kinds of stuff, all these interviews, um, really any day of the week that we can make work. Cool. Um, especially cool. around the client schedule. Cool. It's nice really? to hear. It's it's nice to hear that you have you know there's other groups out there that want to actually help people and educate, not just take people for granted. There are some groups, and I won't say any names of groups, um, but they do seem to want to just here we are, take it for what we give you, and what we tell you is the, is the, is a God's honest truth, and there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, so it's really, I commend you guys on doing, especially the community stuff where you kind of educate people on, you know, what's going on and what they're going through. And, you know, like Shannon and I have talked before, a lot of our job is, is debunking things and saying, Hey, you know, your furnace is running. That's why your curtains are moving right? or, or, you know, so I, I commend you on that. That's awesome that you guys do that. Thank you. I mean, it's at least our vision is very important for the community community to be involved, especially because of the fact that, you know, our field is, I want to say it's very skeptic, like not too many people believe it, but then you have your other side where it's just, you know, everything's paranormal. Um, education about that is, I think one of the most important things. I don't Agreed. think a lot of people truly understand what we do, how we do it, and why we do it. Right. And why we do it is probably the most important. You know, well, part, yeah. of it, the part of it we've discussed is why we do it. Well, some of us can't even answer why we do it. We just do it. It's something that you know is kind of sometimes you're drawn to to, oh, yeah. to just do. And uh, I, I don't know, I, Shannon. Why do you do it? I do it for the feeling of, I don't know, being able to communicate with some something or somebody out there that we can't physically see and, and hearing their story, if they actually communicate with you that much, um, just hearing their story. I mean, especially if it's someone that passed away, you know, many years ago, you know, back before I was even born. It's just kind of cool to hear the stories and the responses that you get. Yeah, the history behind everything is really, really interesting. Some of the things that you can find out just by simple research is astonishing. Oh, yeah. Was that, now, Zach, were you big into history before you started doing this? Yeah, I'm a big history buff, so I love learning about the history of, I mean, whatever it may be. Um, so, yeah, that, that plays a very important role in my eyes. And see, I hated history. I, I hated it in school um, until I, we started doing this, uh, and I was able to look at maps and understand, and even kind of even just the very beginning, understanding where where my house sits and the, the history of the land around the house. 
and then to branch out to other areas and just to see what's happened through here in through the Midwest is just amazing. And I wish I would have listened more in school. I don't. You don't wish you would listen more? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I liked history class, but I, I barely passed history. Zach, you're going to work you. Zach, you're gonna have to help her out and work on her for a little while. Well, I mean, for the most part, when we go into locations, there are some, uh, like the the bigger, um, say, like, you know, Waverly. I, I would do some research on Waverly. Not that, I mean, there's so much out there, people's videos. You can just watch some videos and learn so much about the place. But, like, the older houses, like, you know, where Pam and them are this weekend with the Lizzie Borden house and whatnot. Um, I kind of like to go in blind sometimes because depending on the responses that I get, I like to put the puzzle pieces together. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Now Zach with you, like with your, with our group, we have people, you know, in our, in our little group that do our, in, do the history and stuff on it. Do you guys always want to know all the history before you start? Or do you kind of go in and do an investigation? Like if you say you're going to do a place like Waverly, uh, place you, I don't know if you've ever been there, but if say it's a place you've never been before, do you personally want to know all the history before you go in, or do you want to go in and see what you get and then put the history afterwards with it and see what see what you come up with? It's a good mix of both, honestly. Um, I we usually go in at least with a basic understanding of what might have taken place there. Um, whether it be like murder or suicides or whatever it may be, but um, we go in with a basic understanding and kind of go from there and cool. piece it together throughout the investigation. And yeah. then we always love to learn more after. That's a I good mean, way to do it can, too. Yeah. If we, if we can make that work and usually it has, um, I mean, you, it's really fascinating to see especially putting the video and audio evidence together matching it with the history of the location afterwards is definitely intriguing oh, <laughs> it's an definitely. awesome feeling yeah it's an awesome feeling now so, you hey, go ahead bill no go for it go for it <laughs> when we were talking earlier before we went live you said you did a lot of like uh outdoor investigation and stuff do you guys do like do you guys go a lot of cemeteries Cemeteries we haven't hit up so much uh, just yet, though. Um, we are looking at a few of them at the moment. Um, one of uh, one of them being Bashers Grove, which is probably the most notable in the Chicagoland area. Yep. But um, I mean, we're looking at numerous ones all around the entire area. I mean, it's not just it's not just settled on that one, but usually. Um, I mean, just any place that we have heard about or that has some kind of report on it that has a haunting, such as Cuba Road or whatever it may be, um, right. you know, we, we would love to go out and, and check that out. And that's usually what we do. Well, I can give you a hint from the voice of experience and seeing a bunch of cops coming at you late at night. Um, make sure you have permission from whatever church runs that cemetery first. Um, we did have it, but they never told everyone that was kind of the caretakers of the cemetery. And we were out there in the middle of the night, and the, someone called the cops on us. So make what? sure you got all the, make sure you got all those ducks in a row because some of the oh, yeah. some some places do not want you in their cemeteries at all. We and, Beth and I went and did a cemetery out in Trenton area here in Ohio, and. Uh, there was only, I think, four of us that went and did that cemetery. And this, this was like, there's like a strip in Trenton where there was like a cemetery, like every about mile and a half, every two miles, something like that. We hit up like three or four in one night. But wow. the first one that we went to, and it was freezing cold nonetheless, but the first one that we went to, um, we're sitting there waiting for the other the other guy to come that was doing the camera and stuff. And this truck pulls up into the cemetery with like a bunch of kids in the back of it like in the bed of the truck and they pull up beside us. Uh, and then he had said to him and Beth for a minute. And then they kind of pulled up about 15 feet and all of these kids got out of the back of the truck and they were playing hide and seek, um, in the cemetery <laughs> for, for about an hour. Well, come on. You've and, never done that. Yeah, I have, but there's, 
like we told him what we were doing there and i mean i'm glad we weren't investigating yet because obviously it would have been contaminated but you know we they had just as much right to be there i guess than we did you know because neither one of us had permission <laughs> but i mean I, yeah i like going through cemeteries i'm one of those creepy people that can go hang out in the cemetery at night it's not a big deal to me but Bill does make a good point, though. I mean, I always make sure to secure that that okay first. I mean, that's what I tell everybody. Don't ever do that stuff illegally because it oh, can yeah. just come bite you back. And in, in, in a way, it starts to almost get a bad name for every for all of us if, across, across everywhere. If you get somebody who starts, you know, saying, "Well, these guys just went in there and did it and didn't have permission," we don't want that there. So now, no paranormal investigation group that ever comes out here could ever come here again. So it, it makes it harder for the rest of us too. Well, I apologize because I've never gotten permission to go into a cemetery. I promise I will from here on out, though. Thanks to you guys. <laughs> I really no, haven't. I, have. I never really thought about that at a cemetery. Well, I have known a few people who, um, in groups for that matter, um, which obviously I can't name, but yep. um, it, they've been down that path, and it's really, it's just way too risky. Yeah, it's it's not something you probably want, anybody really wants to go down, the path anybody wants to go down, but some people are willing to take that chance, and again, that's the ones that kind of give the paranormal investigation a bad name um they do they do things and when they then they get caught and they're like they try to they think they're again not naming any names think they're better than everyone and oh well they're it's public land we can be here well technically most cemeteries are not public land they're owned by a group or a ch or they're run by a community or a church right. that has has people take so so and on that note have you guys done many churches Actually, we haven't done any churches yet. Um, we have looked into a few. That's definitely on our bucket list, but we actually haven't been to one yet. We, Shannon, have you done many churches? Uh, I I did one of the places that Tyler put us up in mm -hmm. at uh, when we went and did Ashmore. Um, was like a church that had been turned into like a bed and breakfast. Uh, we investigated a little bit there, but not a whole lot because you know we had to sleep there. We did an open <laughs> we did an open house here in my hometown, and just kind of invited the community in to let them know who we were, that we weren't here as a joke. You know, we were very serious, and now we have actually been asked to do the Catholic Church, which is still up and running four or five nights a week and every Sunday. So we're trying to figure out the the logistics of all that, but actually the the fa the father that's there, he talked to the whole I don't know what they call him the the whole group I I don't know the the council, and they've all agreed that since they know who I am and they know my family that they're gonna they want us to come in and do the church now. Which is are, really are they having a lot of stuff going on or something? Is that why they're calling you in? <sighs> They're not saying. They're just saying that when the minute he said, well, "I think I'd like them to come in," they they talked for about ten minutes. And went, "Yes, yes, we want you to come in." But they won't tell us anything. Like, you know, I don't know if any of the crosses are spinning around or anything, um, or the altar <laughs> ble bleeding or something. I don't know. Um, but they've a they've asked us. You know, go ahead. And, yeah, we we want you to come in, and they want us to do the rectory right off the church um, because there's been several people. Um, the churches. God, it's 120 years old now. So oh, wow. It's, they, there's been several pastors, well, father, I don't know what the priests, I don't know what to call them in Catholic, I don't know, um, that have passed away in the rectory. So, oh. we'll see what we get. What about, uh, <clears throat> Zach, what about, like, locations? You guys done many locations? Like, uh, I guess I should, uh, specify, huh? Um, <laughs> like, like we, that, we do the movie. That freaking narrows it down. Yeah. Uh, like, 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 like Waverly Hills. Was yeah. It, um, like Waverly yeah. or, um, even like out, well, Indiana, like anywhere in Indiana, like, uh, Randolph County Asylum or like big um, locations, not homes. Indiana, not so much. There are, um, Definitely a few, uh, like the Lizzie Borden house, um, and the Axe Murder house, um, 
the, 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 I should the, say. Poliska, yeah. You've done uh, that one? Uh, no, but that is definitely on our bucket list. And actually, that, that sort of answers one of your questions from before. Um, definitely, we are looking to go out there. Well, you know, there's um, we do a place uh, here in Iowa that's the Edinburgh Manor. Uh, that's just up uh, kind of the north, well, west, straight east of Cedar Rap- the Cedar Rapids area by Anamosa. Uh, we we do that quite a lot. If you ever get a chance to come there, that place, there's, sometimes it's the most active place I've ever been, and then sometimes we don't get anything, which is, and I know you've probably been through that before, where you can go to one location and then turn around and go there again, and the first time you go, it's, you get a lot, and then all of a sudden, it's for lack of better terms, it's dead. So. Yeah, that was me at Post Town. Our very first night investigating there was our best. So it just, I, I mean, it. We, I mean, working at, at Randolph County Asylum almost every single weekend a year ago. You know, there was a lot of weekends in between where it was just like. You can't make this stuff happen for the guests that come for those events, and it kind of sucks, but, you know, you can't control that. But there were some good weekends in between, but there's a lot more weekends of going and sitting and hearing crickets forever. Yeah. It gets... And I mean, it's, that's one of the nights where, you know, you're so tired because we have to stay up till 3 or 4 or 5 a.m., and you're asking questions with your eyes closed in the dark, you know? I don't. I don't know. So, are you guys, Zach, Zach, are you guys more of like uh, just you just use your team, or do you like take people? Do you work with like bigger groups and kind of do when you're like doing uh, what I'm going to say when you're doing the community education? Do you guys take bigger groups around the areas? Are you talking about more of like a tour, or are you talking about um, like a just a personal education session? Uh, what well, kind of both? Do you, do you guys do any kind of tours where you take people on tours of locations? No, we don't actually do any tours um, yet. That actually is a thought at the moment. Um, it hasn't been really elaborated on yet, but you never know what the future might hold. So there's a chance. I won't say cool. no. <laughs> never but say we no. Usually, to answer the other part of your question, at least, we usually don't... Um, or we haven't yet, I should say, used or met with any other group. Um, we are open to it. Uh, I, I can promise you that we're not we're not this closed off like for you group. But cool. Um, but no, we are definitely open to it. So if there are any other groups out there, you know, feel free get in touch. So uh, if you know you... something I don't, I'd love to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that, that goes for all of us. Uh, so if if okay, so when you guys do like a home investigation where someone's asked you to come in and do your do a home where they're having issues, you guys prefer to not have the, like homeowner or the person there, or do you feel that it's since they're there all the time anyway that it actually helps make it? for lack of better terms, more normal for whatever is there. Yeah. Well, we do... I mean, it's kind of a mix of both. Um, It's really whatever the client wants. We try and be as um, accommodating as possible, but we also do take it situation by situation. I mean, everything is different. Um, No situation is the same, so we always want to take a look at that, too. Agreed. I know some, know some groups, they want to go in and they don't want the people to see anything they get until they get to see it first. And we, we've always, our group has always looked at it as we could probably go in and maybe get something, but the more normalcy, I guess is the easiest way to say it, of with the, having the clients there, sometimes it does actually make it a little bit more active and kind of keeps things going. The only thing we don't, we try not to do is, we don't really want children to be involved if we can right. help it. So. Well, what if when you go in and do a residential home that only a child is being uh, affected, you still leave the child out? It depending, and this is kind of our view, it depends on the age of the child. Because sometimes the children 
I don't, we don't want any, anything to get stirred up where it attacks or, um, reacts with a child worse and makes things right more, you know, they have them have more issues. We want to try to make it as, we gotta, we gotta protect the kids. Um, because because a lot of times they don't know what's going on and they don't understand, you know, why, why, why are people in here trying to talk to my, my, my imaginary friend that only I, I normally can see and why are they calling him out? We don't want them to feel like they're being attacked in any way uh, or they're being looked at as, as, is this not normal? So we kind of, you almost have to judge to, in our eyes, we almost have to judge the, the, the mental Insulation. state. Yeah. The almost, the, yeah. And almost the mental state of the child. Um, how right. old are they? Do, are they going to understand why, why we're there? If the child's coming up going, I got a ghost underneath my bed, get rid of this asshole, I want to sleep tonight, then we understand that he knows what's going on, or he or she knows right. what's going on. If they come in and we're looking around their room and they're kind of looking at us like, why is there a six foot four bald fat guy standing in my room <laughs> looking underneath <laughs> my bed with a flashlight and putting cameras everywhere? I don't like this, mom. I want to leave. You know, they're, they're, we don't want we don't want to traumatize kids in any way. Any shape, more or form. than they are, yeah. 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 Um Zach, when you guys do go to like residential houses and or I mean anywhere you even investigate, um, I like to always ask our guests this question, but what is your what is your guys' favorite piece of equipment that you like to use when you go and investigate? Oh man, that's a hard one. Um probably <laughs> I'm going to say the EMF detector, um, especially one of our team members is um, very sensitive to energies, so it's really intriguing when she is able to carry that around, or at least somebody with her, and it picks something up, as she does. Oh, so it's what? almost like a... We call that. Yeah, go ahead, Bill. I just forgot the word. <laughs> What's your least favorite piece of equipment? Um, God, least favorite. <laughs> That'd be a hard one. Um, <laughs> honestly, probably. That is a hard oh, question. And, and let that me tell you that. Hard <laughs> let me tell you this much. My least favorite is also my favorite. <laughs> and and, and, and it sounds stupid, but I have my reasons, and so hear me out on this, Your Honor, before you judge on me, Shannon. Okay. Um, my, my, my most favorite is videos, especially when you can't explain what you just saw in the video. But it's my least favorite because all of our, our video systems are wired, and I'm the only one that sets up the system, so I have to unwind 500 miles of cable, and then when it's all done, guess who's got to clean it up? <laughs> so... That was very fun to watch you tear all that stuff down at Missouri State Penn, though. Zach, I'm going to come out and hang out with you now. I don't like Shannon anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're always welcome. <laughs> I'm not that bad. Really not. No, she's not. So, <laughs> so okay, so Zach, while you're thinking about that one, we I'd asked you a question before we came on the air. What is your, what is, like, on the biggest bucket list, what is one location that you are, the biggest one you want to go to? The number one is actually something you've said a couple of times, but the Waverly Hill Sanatorium. What, what makes you want to go there? The history behind it, and, I mean, that, it is just very intriguing, I mean, the amount of activity that has been reported there is just unreal. That is definitely something we want to catch. I'm just hoping we all get a chance to go because there's a rumor going around right now that somebody wants to buy it and turn it into a hotel. Okay, look, look, look. I I looked up something on that. The uh, was it last? I think it was last before last week's episode, and it didn't say anything. It's like it didn't specify or uh, prove that right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it didn't say anything about it turning into a hotel. I don't even know where that rumor came from, to be honest with you. But I couldn't find it anywhere online where they were gonna they were talking about doing that. So cross your fingers. Cross everything. I want to go there. 
when it's not a hotel, I want to walk that. We had some a couple that was with us last this last Saturday that had been there, and the guy said if you really, really, if you watch any of the videos, like when uh, Katrina and what's his what's his face were locked in there, or I don't know how you can okay. be locked in a building with no doors, um, but they were <laughs> they were there. He slept in the the body hallway chute type thing. And, I, and, shoot, yeah. and every time I looked at the video, I'm thinking, well, that's not very that long. How the guy said, if you want to exercise, that's all that thing is huge and it goes on forever. It, it, and it's not going down the hill that really sucks. It's you get, once you go down, you, you come, back, come up. back up. <laughs> I, I have, I've had many friends invite me out there, but it just didn't fall right in my time my time slots to be able to go do anything. So I keep missing the opportunity to go out there. I missed it just like a month ago. too. Some friends of mine went down there and uh, well, not like good friends, but they went down there and got a couple of really good pictures, you know, like thermal pictures. Um, but come to find out somebody said somebody faked it. And so I don't know whether to believe it or not. Now I just need to go for myself. <clears throat> I, I mean, I like, I want to go to Waverly, but there's so many other, I mean, Queen Mary, the Queen Mary, since we're doing that one for Ghost Hunts USA now, that's one of our events. I kind of want to go out there too. I think Queen Mary would be awesome just because they're finally opening up other levels of the ship to allow people to go into now just to see, and they're giving more history. Um, there's a plaque I, the way I understand, it, there's a plaque there that kind of tells of everybody who actually died on the ship, and about a third of them say, when it says a cause of death, it says unknown causes, or someone fell over a balcony for no reason and died. So, kind of would really fell like to go off there. of a balcony for no reason and died. Ooh. Yeah, they like fell from like in the grand the grand staircase. See, I can't talk. In the grand staircase, of, um, I guess someone fell over one of the rails on the from like the fourth or fifth floor, or whatever it is, because it's all wide open, yeah. and fell fell all the way to the bottom. And then when they got up there and they looked, it's like a four and a half or five foot high railing. And people said one minute they were standing there, next minute they're over the rail and they're gone. I see that would be a fun place to investigate. That's definitely on my bucket list too. Well, that you know, it's, you know, it's an active hotel. People actually stay there all the time. So, and from what I understand, it's pretty dang expensive to stay there. But it's just one of those you have to go. It's just you have to go. Yeah, if I remember correctly, they opened uh, the most haunted room as a hotel room. I think it's going for like four ninety nine a night. If I remember correctly. Yeah, it's up there. Ouch. <laughs> Beth That's and a... Charlotte went for, uh, they went out there and investigated it. It was still when the other areas were blocked off, but it was for the Nick Groff tour. They were they went up there. I wonder if we could just go there and sleep outside on the deck. How much would that cost? <laughs> <laughs> or on the dock. Yeah. I'll sleep in the water. I'll bring a floaty. It's okay. Um. What about this, uh, what's the other new location we just got? The one in New Orleans. Or is it New Orleans? I have no idea. I'm stuck on what's happening in two weeks. I can't get that out of my head. Well, go ahead and talk about it a little bit. You know you love talking about the Sally House. Zach, have you ever heard of the Sally House? It sounds familiar, but I have not actually done much research on that. It's in Atchison, Kansas. Um... And I will not this Friday. Well, actually, it's next weekend. Um, not this weekend, but next weekend, the 18th, we're going to be there. Everything that I've kind of read on the whole thing, I know, Shan. I know you're. I know you're laughing at me, uh, <laughs> Shannon. I can tell. <laughs> I um, was holding it in until you said that. <laughs> um, we've done a, a lot of research on it, and it seems like the groups that go there, or anybody that goes there. If anything happens, it always seems to happen to men. Women get a lot of things, but the men are what who get scratched and pushed and don't feel right. And some of them, like Shannon, you had you were talking about that one group of people that got physically ill. Now that was the whole group. That was the whole group, all because but, one person was provoking. 
And Zach, just so you know, I open my big mouth and I can say hi. And for some reason, the spirits think I'm provoking. I don't understand <laughs> it. I can't explain it. Um, but we're going there and I, th- I haven't seen the guest list, but I have a feeling there's not many men that are going to this location. And I'm going to be the only one that's going to be there. I'm kind of screwed. Uh, so you'll be yeah. fine. Well, Zach, you know, you, you always watch those shows and everything, and it's always the cameraman that always gets scratched or hurt or pushed. That's yeah. kind of how that's kind of how I started off. I was just the camera guy. I'm the tech guy. I'm going to run this and going to run that. And my very first investigation, I had a big, huge scratch across the back of my neck about, about two hours into the whole thing. So I knew I was in trouble from that point. Yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> so much ghost adventures, apparently. Uh, I, I, you know. Oh Jesus! <laughs> and you guys have the same first name too, Zach. Oh yeah, I just thought about that. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's the that hotel. It's a hotel in New Orleans that we just booked. We started booking for Ghost Hunts USA. That Andrew Jackson Hotel. I want to go check it out too. I want to check out every location on our website. Win the There's... lottery. Take me with you. Good. We just need to get the boss man to just send us everywhere at least one time. So we get it, all the staff can at least investigate every location we do just one time. We'll take Zach with us. And we can honestly say we've had Zach with us. We didn't say it wasn't Zach Beggins, but we got Zach. This is true. <laughs> this is true. Um, Zach, you'll go with us, won't you? Oh, of course I will. <laughs> Who's this other one? Eastern State, we just got back, right? That's the one yep. we did. Okay. Yep. Yep. There's so many on here. What's what is the Crime and Punishment Museum in Georgia? See, I haven't even been on our website to look at all of our locations here lately. I have no clue. So Zach, what's the? Without giving honest, obviously details away because we you know we treat everything with doctor patient confidentiality on stuff. Um, when we're doing the homes and stuff, what's the most, for lack of better terms, haunted location that you guys have done? Or what? what I guess an experience. Area. area. Yeah, yeah, not area. not even really an area. Just what's the most haunted experience you've had? You guys have had. I would definitely say the most active house we've ever been to has been in Plainfield. If anyone knows where that's at, um, I mean, it was just swarming. They had their own security system that picked up so many different orbs, ghettos. I mean, it was just crazy. I mean, the, it was crazy the amount of activity that was going on, even in that one room. Plainfield. Why does that sound so familiar? I'm going to pull a Donald and I'm going to Google it. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> I never, <laughs> laugh. never laugh too much. Indiana. Is it Indiana, Indiana? No, Plainfield, Illinois. Oh. It's about halfway between Aurora and Juliet, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Is it was it a village? Yeah. Was it in a village? Yes, I believe so. So did you guys get a call to go down and do a, a home down there? Is that what we did? Yes, they uh, they contacted the group and just kind of gave an overview of what was going on um, and just asked us to come in. Cool. Did you guys find anything? I mean... Yeah, especially um, in that one hot spot in that room. I mean, it was just warming with activity. I mean, you could feel the energy around you. But after watching all of the video and listening to the audio, I mean, it was very interesting because things were caught on both ends. So how how close was the location, obviously without giving it away, how close was the location to the river that runs through there? An estimate would probably be about 15 to 20 minutes, maybe. Okay. It seems like a lot of the locations we're getting asked to do, 
are either right on or really close to a river, um, which I got, my, my one of my beliefs is that it seems like, you know, river is a moving and powerful thing. Water is, and it puts off energy. It creates its own energy as it's going. So we're kind of wondering, is it possible that some of these are tied together because of river systems and waterways? Uh, when, you know, you'll start, we'll start looking at some of the locations we've investigated and kind of go, you know, we were just up the river. They're having the same thing up there and we're going to be down the river just a little bit. And this house is right on the river. I'm wondering if it's all tied together somehow. It's, it kind of sounds like how the Bel Air house is set up. Yeah. It's yeah, it's right near the river. Um, what's behind it? Uh, uh, and it's near an Indian burial ground. Um, but like I said before in past episodes, that just about everything probably nowadays that is built is near an Indian burial ground somewhere. Now, do you guys have any burial grounds near you guys, Zach? Um, there's a few that I know of. Um. I mean, there could be many, many more. Don't get me wrong, but um, there are there are certainly a few that I know of. What? Uh, okay, so I know Waverly is on your bucket list, but where have you guys been? Um, as far as a location like that that you've actually like really liked or got a lot of activity at? The most activity, um, I would probably say. Honestly, the most activity would be in that house. Um, I don't know what it is about it, but it, it would definitely be that house we investigated. Wow. Have you guys been to any like big location like Waverly or? Not yet. No, that is definitely in the works and coming soon. How long? How long has your group been together? As of right now, it's been since 2013, so it'd be about. Four and a half years, because we formed, actually, on Halloween in uh, 2013. That's not creepy or nothing. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Let's throw a paranormal team together on Halloween. No, we, um, I mean, me and a pair of friends have done this as a hobby, per se, for the longest time before that. And we just, we had started planning it. But it just kind of all came together then. That's so we, cool. We knew what we wanted to do. It was just a matter of time. It's weird when it all just comes together when you're not even thinking about it. You're just kind of like, hey, we're doing it now. Let's go. <laughs> it, yeah, it that's took, very true. It took my friend getting scratched at a location that I went to. It was the first time we'd been to a location and investigated other than somebody's like residential home. It was a uh, Crown Point Jail in Indiana. Um, she got scratched, and right after that, like the next day, I was like, "Let's start a paranormal group. This is like so interesting." <laughs> you got scratched, and hopefully, it'll never happen to me. But I'd like to do this more. You know, there's not too many people that go out and think that way. But I, <clears throat> I know you said you liked your EMF reader is your favorite piece of equipment. But what other equipment do you guys like to use? What do you guys bring on your investigations and residentials? Um, usually we'll bring our, all of our video equipment, um, audio equipment, EMF detectors, digital thermometers, um, I mean, that's just to name a few, all different sorts of equipment. Um, have you guys gotten any video footage, uh, at a residential? Yeah, it was that one house, um, that I mentioned earlier. Is that, like, how many residentials would you guys say you've done? So far, at least, um, oh man, <laughs> at least a dozen. And there's that's only... at least. I can't. I can't really put a number on it. I'd have to look back on all my on all my files, but yeah, at least a dozen at this point. What about you guys, Bill? How many have we done? Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, residentials. Residentials. Resid I think we've done 12 so since the 1st of January now. Um, uh, we we average probably probably 20 to 25 a year that we do for the last what, eight years that we've been doing it. 
eight to ten years. So we're at we we got a pretty good average on on things that we in a lot of times it's just one person we do we'll do one home and then somebody who sees what we're doing will come by and it's the neighbor hey would you guys be willing to come back and do ours because we feel the same things they're feeling so it just kind of keeps going back and forth and it's it's kind of nice uh that people understand what we're doing and and zach you've probably seen it too you get one one name one person doesn't want to call because they don't want to they don't want to seem to stand out in their community but then one person will see it happening or see you go out and do something and then others will follow. Yeah. Others kind of go, Oh, so we're not the only ones or they talk quietly. And I just, my fire helmet is, sorry. I just had a squirrel moment. <laughs> so Zach, things. Zach, I'm a, I'm a volunteer firefighter and I have some very old firefighting equipment. Cause I kind of collect it in my house. And I just realized I have two two fire helmets from the thirteen or from the thirteen hundreds from the nineteen thirties that are out hanging on my one wall, and one of them is off the wall and upside down on the table. What the hell? Obviously, it didn't fall while you were sitting here doing the show. It, it was bored. No, well, I have it bracketed up there. I made these bra- have these brackets that hold everything up, and it takes it takes forever for me to get it down and it's just off the bracket and on the table just like somebody took it off and laid it down and sat it there wow i don't know i don't know what to tell you bill i just sc- that break was out a recorder it, buddy on, air on the air no no we never Turn your do this in, a- on in your house do it <laughs> no, no zach are you like the rest of us we don't do it in our own home <laughs> i do it in my home i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> no i usually don't do it in mine I know we've got something in our house here, and I just don't want to stir it up. They're nice with us. Maybe they don't like that helmet right there. I don't know. I won't. I won't turn on equipment here. I know one thing I'll never do in my house is the the DR sixty. Why not? For the same reason, I won't turn the fast on. <laughs> because how often have you went to do a voice recording to do a, a recording session with the DR sixty and not got anything i don't have a dr60 i don't have the the the, the ability to get one because i'm not loaded <laughs> i don't have the ability with this tyler got us one zach do you know what the dr60 is yes um zach if you tell me you have one i'm hanging up i'm leaving because yeah, i don't yeah, we're have done. One. <laughs> no i don't actually have one no, <laughs> no. okay i like you more now because you you don't have one either so Shannon's got this whole fancy thing where she'll never give it back, and it's it's she, not she, even in my possession. What are you talking about? Mm, the the boss she, bought it for us at RCI, and it has not left Beth's hands. But did some, you not hear Zach? Did you just not hear her say that she won't turn it on? And it's kind of like to me that means I've got it right here. I could look at it and tell you guys what it oh, looks like, no. and it does. So I've had it here before. Before I went to when I went to West Virginia, I had it here at my house, but they won't even let me touch one. When we're together with him. Tyler got up and left his sitting on a chair. He had all the guests leave at Old South Pittsburgh Hospital in one hallway, and he left it sitting in its little in the little pouch on a chair. So we took, Zach, we took the DR-60 down to the, in the Missouri State Penitentiary. If you ever get a chance to go to that, even whether it's a day walk through and take a tour or come down and join us, you know, um, and be with us on one of the ghost tents where we're there all night long. We went down to the uh, gas chamber, and that's the only gas chamber that we know of and that I've ever found any history on that has two chairs in the gas chamber. And we we did a private vigil. Uh, we have we kind of have a competition down there and a pers- or a drawing, and the person's name gets drawn out. And they, for the last vigil of the night, they get to go down with Tyler and Pam or Beth or whoever's there. And with the mediums and do a, you know, they don't, they only take the person and like two other people at the most and go down and do a private vigil slash kind of seance type thing in the gas chamber. And Tyler just handed the DR60 to one of the people and said, ask any question you want and kind of explained, you know, if you see the light going off, it'll blink all the time. 
and it's kind of a steady pace. But if it comes on and stays on and we're not making any noise, we're possibly picking up something. And the guest asked a question that even Tyler had said he never thought of asking, and that was, do you want to go home? And we act when we listen back and you you know kind of turn it up and we got out where we can actually hear it real well, you can hear a voice that's almost crying saying, Yes, please. And it's it's so hard to get the recordings off of the DR sixty. It's not something simple that you can take off with a USB cable. That's that's another thing why those things I don't I wouldn't pay twelve to fifteen hundred dollars for it, to be honest with you. And after having it, <laughs> after having it for so long, get to the point where you don't even want to use it anymore sometimes. Like, I could even care less if I have it to use with guests. Zach, what and kind I'm, of, re- what kind of you know, uh, EVP recorders do you guys use? What kind of what I'm saying? EVP recorders. What kind of voice recorder do you guys use? I'm sorry, you're you're breaking up on my end. I caught what kind of what? Voice recorder. <laughs> oh, what kind of voice recorders? Um, yeah. I know it sounds weird, but we do use our phones on top of, um, which we have caught some very interesting um, EVPs on that. Um, but we do have a, a few other pieces of equipment that we use. Um, Usually, sorry, my thing is kind of acting up here. I'm not sure if you, can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so Bill, typically, what's that? Bill's <laughs> breathing heavy. <laughs> uh, so typically, um, <laughs> we've used the uh, SB7 before. Um, yeah, the spirit box. But we are looking for, actually, we are going to be probably getting this soon, um, but it's the newer SB11 Spirit Box. Yeah. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of that one yet. Yeah, I've got both. Okay. Yeah. The, the, she's an overachiever. The, what's that? <laughs> she, she's an overachiever. <laughs> well, that's definitely a good thing, no. Um, but definitely the SB11, um, but we have used the SB7 before, though. So you guys have used an SB11 on an investigation? Not an 11, a 7. We are looking at getting the 11. It's To be honest with you, if I had to choose between the two to take on an investigation, I would stay with the SB7. Is it that bad? It's I hardly get anything on the SB11. I get There's more stuff coming through the SB7 for some reason. Oh, good to know. But, it all depends, though, because sometimes I can hand it to a guest, you know, because I do lend out my equipment to the guests that come on our events. Um, I'll lend it out to somebody, and, and if somebody, a spirit in that prison or some, wherever we're at is connecting to that guest, they'll get more activity walking off with the thing than I will, you know? Yeah. It's hard to say, but as far as me just using it, no, I, the SB7 is way better for me. I don't think I've ever actually seen the SB11. It's it's at all like not even a picture. No, I'm actually trying to look it up. It's it's like the same picture two SB sevens in one. So instead of just having the the one channel that you can go forward or backwards and change the speed, you've got two of those that you can control at the same time. So you could actually have one channel uh, going forward and one channel going backwards, and you can have them both set on a different speed. You can have one on AM. F. I mean, there's so much crap you can do with the SB eleven. Wonder how that would work with the white box. I'd rather have the white box, to be honest with you. Hmm. Well, you have to have something to put through it. What the SB11? Oh, well, you have oh, no the white box. You actually have to have something a control going through it. It doesn't. Oh just yeah, work like on do, its own. do you guys use the seven with that or the yeah, phasma? Yeah, we, we but, um everything from the phasma to the SB7 to um, um, oh shoot. And we just took an actual police scanner and let it, the old fashioned Ooh, one that, cool. that runs constantly, you know, look, oh, over every, every static channel there is. And it, it just picks up on when there's a call type thing. 
Yeah, and it just keeps constantly going through, and you can actually put it on open scan where it's just constantly picking up everything and then hook it to the box, and we tried that, and that we actually got the most out of. Because it is it, the even the SB7, you know, it's just the uh, SB7. They're just radios. They're running through radio frequencies, but they're not on. They're on set frequencies, um, right? With the with the, an actual police scanner, we actually picked up. We since it runs through hundreds of frequencies on every channel, it seems sometimes it picks up more, and we can get more to come across. But it's getting harder to find those scanners because the government is now shutting down a lot of the of the 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 stations and they're going narrow band and all that fun stuff. So it's I mean I we very when we first started out we had the SB seven. I, I mean I absolutely that's I had my grandpa come through the SB seven. So I mean I don't doubt that piece of equipment at all. Um, but if I had to pick between the 7 or the 11, I would stay with a 7. I would not waste that $100 on an SB11. Unless you find it per cheap, then that's a different story. But when I went to get one, it was like 118 bucks. Now I have to go look. Thanks. You guys got me uh, looking at more equipment. <laughs> Thanks, Alright, well, <laughs> we, got, we got about maybe under a minute left. I just got my, my notification. Well, hey, we want to throw a thanks out to you, Zach. Thank you very much for being here. You're welcome to come back anytime you want to join us on any show if you want to jump in. Uh, I want to send a, a special thanks out to those guys. The, again, the p- people serving in the military, thank you to everybody that's out there. Thanks to Jimmy for being our producer on the backside back over there. Jimmy, thank you very much. Thank you, Shannon. Awesome show, like always. You're awesome, Bill. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, join us again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. I'm probably going to get sued over that now. Um, Copyright. <laughs> we make no money off that, so and we and... we still haven't figured out a winner for the uh, the contest either. So we're gonna have to come up with something for that. Yep. So we'll uh, figure something out for next week. Get, get your EVPs into us. We'll kind of we'll we'll look out the winners, and we'll, we I don't know how many we have if we even have any yet. Um, oh, so we'll get, we'll keep it open. Anything. Send us your EVPs. We'll go through and we'll find the best EVP, and you will be the winner, and we'll get you a prize. So. Uh, yes. Join Thank us you again. guys for listening. Thank you very much. You guys have a good night and thanks again, Zach, for coming on. Thanks for having me. 